I mean, I love Payam. He's a great, so funny. Yes. But he can be pretty stubborn. I, not because I don't even know him that well personally, but just listening to the way he like talks and argues and whatnot. So if I mean, he's probably the most <laughs> frustrating person to talk to. Anything <laughs> strategy pretty related. resolute on his ideas. No, I, I shouldn't say that. There's actually worse. But uh, yes, he is very stubborn. He he believes in what he uh, he believes. Okay. Well, um, I, I would hope the person he, believes. Yeah. In <laughs> well, he he's not. That's usually how mm, beliefs work. I shouldn't even say that. But I was going to say he's not willing to change, but he has changed his ways sometimes. That's true. I mean, he, he doesn't... I mean, TT1's not a one baser anymore. He's capable of playing two base, three base, or even even just straight up macro. Well, I think he only one base back in the days when Steps of War was in yeah. map pool. I think his one base days were very limited, actually. Were they? Hmm. I think so, but... Well, those were a long... Those were That was a long time That was time a dark ago. time. That yeah, was a dark, dark time, time. That was dark when Puma was still playing Brood War. Puma, of course, our red Terran in the top left corner from Team Evil Geniuses. He is uh, just going to open up very standard as well. You know, it is Ohana, and he does have that one game advantage. Very good psychologically for him. Up against TT1, the blue Protoss in the bottom right. Now, TT1 is saving up a lot of minerals. No doubt it's going to Nexus first oh again. Yeah. And, of course, Ohana is a lot easier to hold your oh. ramp. Nope. Oh, he's not. Delayed gateway and assimilator. So he's wow. probably doing a gateway assimilator into a Nexus. Very delayed. And uh, normally, of course, if you if you want to go for Nexus first, you scout after Pylon. And I just assumed TT1 was doing it, but he's Yeah, not. normally it looks like this, but I think, I mean, I don't. I'm done. <laughs> I don't know. TT1 is so an anomaly. So interesting, right? He's yeah. an anomaly, man. I, I even thought he wasn't going to saturate his assimilator. He was going to actually... Like up Nexus? No, he was going to keep everything on and then just have all the rallied probes go towards the assimilator. Uh, look, he actually takes one off. Yeah. I mean, he's he's messing with me. This is so... Yeah. <laughs> he's <laughs> actually guys, messing with me. This series is from Replay. So, TT1, I mean, it's not like... He, it's not by any means he can't hear us or he's not... Guido didn't talk to him between games. Look at this. Whoa, a matter pylon. TT1 just trying to be annoying and get in the way of stuff. And uh, I guess also this pylon does allow him to seek gas timings if there is one, but I mean, this is a very cheeky thing from DT1. We've been I seeing a lot of manor stuff today. Manor engineering bays, manor pylons. Dude, I don't know how they became mannered because there's nothing mannered about it. I hate manor pylons. <laughs> Trust me, if you played StarCraft 1, you would hate manor pylons. Three manor pylons in your base. You drop from like. Hundred well, you drop like forty percent efficiency. Yeah, it's pretty happens. frustrating. But uh, like you can see Puma want to do the same. In fact, he was trying to deny the Nexus. TT1 does manage to drop it anyways. Now, what's interesting is that again, uh, TT1 is really insistent on playing macro against Puma, and I guess it's because TT1's been showing good control across the board with his Colossus, and uh, he's he's just been doing really well against all of his opponents in. Uh, in NASL, especially mm -hmm. when he played against Braddock. I just remember him able to really dissect the army fantastically. TT1 also scouting with his uh, probe and just kind of see if he can place a proxy pylon, giving him a lot of options for aggression. Again, we, we see a lot of one gate into three gate aggression and a lot of poke. And on Ohana, it's actually not as effective though because the ramp is pretty narrow. I don't think we should see some sort of 3-gate pressure. Um, it, it would probably come a little bit later, seeing as he got his assimilator first. Normally, when you get your assimilator first, you give up a lot of the timings of three gateways when they're really, really powerful. So I don't think we'll be seeing it too soon. There is the potential to actually see it like a 6-gate or something like that, which seems more oh. reasonable. Oh, robotics facility. Wow. Look at this. Okay. Immortals. And he's doing a sneaky immortals, not just regular immortals, man. Yeah, the worst kind of immortals. Next to slimy immortals, those are those, those are, are bad. also pretty gross as yeah. well. Puma is going as he's just getting up everything else by pretty standard time, going for a quick stim and his uh, his factory. Oh, this SCV will get in. This is the worst SCV possible. He's gonna think it's just standard. Yeah, it's like, oh, three gays. Like, is he going to pressure me whatnot? It's like, oh, he's got both of his gases. He's going to choose tech soon. It's like, am I going to see the tech? And Puma's like, oh, he doesn't see anything. TT1. And uh, has a, he's got a lot of things going for him right now. Yeah. Well, a lot of the six gate pressure actually has to have the gateways down right now. So he sees no gateways down here. He actually sees no tech. So that should actually be a little bit of a cue to say, hey, 
Puma, I yeah. need to put some some more bunkers down. And he does put down an additional bunker, but I don't think that will be enough. He needs more. Now, two additional gateways should go down from here. There's one. There's the other. Maybe even another might go down. There it is. Oh. Three gateways go yeah. down. And, so you know, you're absolutely right because Puma scout no gas is three and four. There has to be something suspicious on Correct. It. And uh, that's where you actually think, okay, is my opponent actually doing a fast expansion, which is normally what you're thinking, or is he doing some sort of very, very weird build, which is what we're actually seeing. Now, remember, these have the rocks. Yeah. And uh, look at the bunker. You, Andre. Yeah, actually, laddering, <laughs> you were telling me. Thank you, Verda. Now, the, the rocks <laughs> provide a huge weak point in Ohana, especially with an Immortal. You're able to really take it out quickly with that DPS. Immortals against armored objects or units are one of the highest DPS in the entire game. And if you're not in position, you can just straight up die as Terran, especially with force fields. You can use that bunker to command center distance as a force field mm -hmm. boundary and then really get a concave based off it. So, so pretty funky things can happen depending on how uh, TT1 chooses the posture, but looks like he might try to just go straight oh, up wow. to the ramp. That's kind of suspicious. Um, I, I obviously would say the other way would be a lot better. Even though yeah. your opponent can prepare a little bit more, these bunkers are that nowhere factory. near as relevant. That factory might scout the pylon, but again, no. Puma's still pretty unaware of this. Oh, and I think he's about to see it. Here we go, Frodan. And the SEVs are not pulled in. There they finally are, but the first bunker goes down immediately. There the force fields actually pop up mm. finally, but the, the Immortal zealots. is actually being targeted down very fast. The Zealots are not engaging. There's only two Zealots out of the eight that oh, were fighting. Oh, man. And there was such an opportunity for TT1 to really capitalize. Puma did lose a lot of SEVs, but uh, Puma does have Stim and Medivacs out, and that's going to make it that much harder. TT1 did kill a significant amount of workers, though. 18 have been, uh, have been dropped wow. here. Wow. But still, I mean, the medevac count has stabilized, and you can see he has two. Yes, it might not seem like a lot, but as soon as another two are added, it becomes very difficult to actually stop this force. You need to basically say, I need to kill all the Marines Marauders or not engage at all, because any engagement from here on out, it's, he's just going to stim, do a ton of damage, and if he backs off, he's just going to heal up, and it's new units against non-new units. TT1 is breaking the rocks, officially giving him two entry paths to his opponent, Puma, is uh, just is just going to just play his own defense, I guess, mm -hmm. and while macroing up units, he's getting his plus one, which gives him another critical upgrade. Correct. TT1 not making probes anymore, just focusing uh, solely on production, so TT1 is really insisting on doing a, a, a crippling damage to his opponent, otherwise risk really far behind because he has no tech really to follow this up. You can see Puma doesn't really have the SCVs in position to repair. Pretty decent force fields, but a lot of units are trapped from behind. The Zealots can't engage, so that while the Immortals are safe, the Zealots really have no role into it. The follow-up force fields will be key. If TT1 has any, no, he actually has no energy left. And this is looking very good for Puma, and all of a sudden, it looks like Puma will hold. Yeah, and this is going to be it. Frodan, there it is. GG gets called out. TT1 will fall, and Puma will go on to being 7-0 and zero in the North American Star League. Absolutely fantastic. He is... The first place player in all of NASL. Well, he still has one more series against Night End. Uh, that was oh rescheduled, yeah. so That's right. <laughs> he has to go eight and zero Hard to have a perfect he's season. Oh but yeah, man, he's still I, I just, I, I mean, those are the kind of stuff that as Terran you get so frustrated because again, we're talking about that distance between the command center and the bunker. Well, we can force field and as if the command center and the bunker acts as two additional force yeah. fields, and it's like that concave can set up so well, but uh, you know. Puma was able to just set up strong position, and it was really cool because at one point it, w it was like he would send his Marines forward and keep his Marauders back and snipe the sentries, and it was just really good control from Puma. Very impressive, and I'm going to save that replay so I can watch and ladder later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the big thing I think was um, the Zealots, you said it yourself, the Zealots not engaging, being clumped up behind the Immortals, and then the Immortals being picked off without yeah. taking any stalker damage. And normally that's a point where you can actually force your opponent back a little bit kill a lot of SCVs and at least snipe some of the medevacs. You need to do that. Kill the medevacs, making sure that your gateway units are still relevant. But with the medevacs around, the gateway units are significantly weaker, and uh, because of that, he's able to just snowball an advantage. Puma now is 7-0 and zero with 13 points in NASL Season 3. Thank you to GameMinder, the sponsor of that game and series, the smartphone application that lets you know about upcoming NASL broadcasts.